So if you look at all the statistics, yes, CrossFit is dying. The games this year was actually lower than the games last year. Yo! It's CrossFit over. I didn't want to do this now. I wanted to do this in about three months because nine months ago, I made my video titled CrossFit will be dead in three years. And in three months, it would be one year later and I was going to do a yearly check-in so until the point where it was actually dead. And I used YouTube metrics. In this video, we have people talking from first-hand accounts, that being Talking Elite Fitness with Rory McKernan, and we have Craig Ritchie talking about some stuff that I wasn't even really aware of. And at the back end of this, we've got the director of sport, Dave Castro, on the Sevon podcast talking about some handful of other things. And after after all of that stuff, I'm going to tell you what the actual issue is, why CrossFit is actually dying. And it's something that started in 2017. But let's start with why we're all here in the first place. Have at it, Mr. Richie. Woke up to this on uh, Monday morning, I think it was, CrossFit Mayhem, Mayhem Nation email. CrossFit is over. I was like, damn. All right. Well, the reason we wanted to have you on is that there was uh, there was an email that, that went out from CrossFit Mayhem to the line was, you know, CrossFit is over. And that's going to certainly get your attention whenever you see that. Yeah, it will. It looks like they're taking one out of Andrew Hiller's playbook. Good job, CrossFit Mayhem, right? But uh, to be completely honest with what happened is that it was a oversight by our team. There was no review process in place. And somebody with the intention of trumpeting the how fantastic the community was, et cetera, made a questionable decision in a clickbaity title, which is completely not what we do at Mayhem. <sighs> I'll admit it, guys. That was me. I wrote CrossFit Mayhem's title for that email. That wasn't me. It wasn't me. And it's not what Mayhem stands for, but it is interesting that they're throwing the marketing guy under the bus. Or there's a marketing guy? You guys have a marketing guy? I thought it was Froning who wrote all those emails to everybody. What? I've been lied to! But it started this freaking waterfall again. Not the same waterfall, a different waterfall. A freaking roaring rapids. Now everyone's talking about CrossFit is dying. With the biggest YouTuber in the CrossFit space, Craig Ritchie, let's hear about it. So, is it really dying in terms of trends? I went on to Google and uh, went on to Google Trends, which is like how much and how often something is searched for. Huh? I never heard of Google Trends. What is this magical Google Trends, Mr. Ritchie? Well, searches for CrossFit since July 2013 have been on a down. Although they were consistent to probably 2017. 2017 is when they fired the media team, and that's very important to this entire conversation. CrossFit is a media company. Get that wrapped around your head. And a media company you think would want to do very well on the world's biggest search engine, that being Google. So when you type in CrossFit, I'm pretty sure that you can really look at that thing and have a pretty good idea how well CrossFit is doing. To me, it looks like it's pretty accurate. I mean, it picks up around 2012, 2013. It hangs out at the top. It stays that way until about 2017 when the media team gets fired. There isn't too big of a turn down until about 2018. And then there is that drastic turn down. And the thing that I like to do that Richie brings out in his video is that Google Trends has made this really simple. 100 is the best and zero is the worst. And you can give yourself a range. So if I made the range 2023, CrossFit's going to be the most popular around the games because everyone's Googling CrossFit around the CrossFit games. And then the most, most important time is right around the open. You can see that every single year, it spikes around the games. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the games in 2022, 2023, and compare it to the time in which the media was still over at CrossFit, that being 2017. Also, conveniently enough, right around the time where CrossFit CrossFit seemed to be the most healthy, at least to me. And from what you can see right there is that if CrossFit's at 100 in 2017, it's about 32% as popular or something like that in the year 2022. And then it's even less popular in 2023, which means that it is getting less popular. We all think it's doing better, but Google tells you that it's doing worse year after year. Mr. McKernan, what do you have to say about that? You know, there's definitely some 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 factual things that are, that are going wrong that we're CrossFit's clearly having trouble. I'm not trying to make any bones or secrets about yeah. it. Factually in trouble, he says. Factually in trouble. I'm taking that out of context. I don't know what the hell he was talking about right there, but he says CrossFit is factually in trouble. What are they factually in trouble about? I don't know. I grabbed that from a random section of the freaking podcast, and you should know that that is out of context. But he does say CrossFit is factually in trouble. Maybe Tommy can give some clarification about what we're thinking about right here. But I think it's interesting to say, you know, when we throw up metrics like, you know, people aren't Googling CrossFit at the same rate. Oh, 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 oh thanks, thanks, Tommy. And secretly, we could look around and be like, hey, we actually have more paying affiliates than ever before, or CrossFit's overhead is less, I, but we just don't know. 
and they have no reason to tell you, which they do clarify right there. Unless they're publicly traded, they got no reason to tell us that sort of stuff. But we do have good old Google telling us how the media company CrossFit is doing, and they ain't doing so hot. They don't sell shoes like Nike. They don't sell coffee like Starbucks. They sell training certifications, and they sell level ones, they have the affiliations, but the brand has gone down, and Google shows you that. I wonder what happened if you look up Starbucks on Google Trends. Starbucks. Yeah, it's just going up and up and up. Keeps on going up. McDonald's. Keeps on going up! And then it goes down in 2022. I don't know why. What happened to McDonald's in 2022? Let's look up fitness. Fitness. Fitness is one consistent line. What else is a media company? ESPN? Oh, look at that. ESPN peaked right around the same time that CrossFit did. And then it just goes downhill. Because nobody watches broadcast TV anymore. Because nobody wants to pay for the subscription for ESPN Plus, which is where the CrossFit games were being streamed. And ESPN was the most popular in 2012, 2013. That probably helped CrossFit then. Does that mean it's going to help CrossFit now? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter! I'll tell you what will later. But first, let's hear what Mr. Marquez has to say about the health of CrossFit and the way that they they make money. Go ahead. Oh, well, I will say, I, I just did some back of the napkin math here. Um, so roughly 1,100 people took L1s in person. That's not counting webinars. And that's not counting L2s and other. It, obviously, there's ebbs and flows, but you're looking at anywhere from 12 to 13 million annually in per, just from in-person L1s based off of, again, this is, this is back of the napkin math. I, I love the idea of it, but it used to always really grind my gears when people would do the napkin math on the open and be like, well, these guys are rich. They're making money hand over fist. But like, <laughs> I just thought that that was kind of funny because we've got napkin math, napkin math. Tommy's talking about napkin math. We made $20 million in certifications. And then Rory goes, yeah, I always really hated it when they did napkin math. Plug those things together. They were minutes apart. But the other thing that we can look at that isn't napkin math is the athletes' followings from these periods of time where we looked at ESPN and CrossFit. They were huge in 2012 to 2014, and then it was good in 2018 or 19, and then it was dead. Richie, take it away. If you look at the old school athletes, right, Jason Lee, 470,000 votes. Matt Fraser, 2.4 million. Dan Hayes, 602,000 votes. Noah Ross, 846,000. Katrin, 1.7 million. Tia, 2 million. Brent, 1.5 million. Chris Fee, 249,000. Josh Bridges, 792,000. Annie, 1.4 million. Rich Rennie, 1.5 million. Noah Horvath, 431k. Noah Fisher, 1.1 million. Pat Bowen, 630,000. That's just to, you know, they're like people that have been in the sport for a decent whack of time. I think he did a really good job of grabbing some people that weren't just the game's winners, but were also just popular faces in the sport at that point in time, such as Chris Spieler. Chris Spieler's 250,000 freaking followers. He's like the Colton Mertens of 2014. Why does Colton Mertens not have 250,000 subscribers? And now he talks about some of the more modern day athletes. Starts off with Mal O'Brien. Compare that to what I would call the new school athletes. And of these, probably the biggest names that I'm going to say, Malibrine, 739,000, Daniel Brandon, 711,000, Emmy Lawson, 334,000, Emmy Garland, 113,000, Emmy Carey, 60,000. And then on the other side, Justin Jones, 545,000 for a two-time games winning champ. Jeffrey Allen, Gaines, 147,000, Jake Crouch, 50,000, Dylan Pepper, 5th place on Earth, 53,000, Jason Hopper, 78,000, Nick Matthews, Matthew Swap, 56,000. Freaking Justin Medeiros only has 500-something thousand followers on Instagram. He's won the CrossFit Games two times. When there were only five people at the Games in 2020, he was one of the five. You'd think he would have picked some people up at that time. Oh yeah, they were already dead at that point. Jason Hopper has been hanging out at freaking HW PO for a year and a half or two, and the dude only has 80,000 freaking followers. Rich Froning hung out with Reebok. Granted, he won the CrossFit game, so it's probably not the best example. Who else hung out with Reebok? I don't know, Jason Kalipa, doesn't he have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram? Who won the games in 2007, 2008? Would he be a good comparative to Jason Hopper present day? I know their followings aren't the same, but clearly, the first subset of athletes that Richie showed, the Fronings, the Frasers, picked up steam with CrossFit when they had the media team when they were at their most powerful. These athletes, they're doing okay. Is that what you think? You think? But before I had my account shut down, I had 40,000 freaking followers on Instagram. And I never made the CrossFit games. All I did was make a bunch of videos on YouTube. So if you look at all the statistics, yes, CrossFit is dying. There it is, he says it. CrossFit is dying based on statistics, not on his opinion, but statistics should be and are better than an opinion, aren't they? We have to accept, and I didn't, it's, it's not as CrossFit over, but it is certainly like, anybody who hasn't gotten to the point in their mind that CrossFit is different, is needs to, you know, have that funeral for the past life that they lived um, and the emotions that they felt with it and what they expected CrossFit to be and understand that everything evolves and it moves forward and we need to think about what, what the future of CrossFit would look like. I'm not entirely sure what Rory means by that. Maybe he means that there's a bunch of people at the top that are making decisions and it's not just one person or two people who can say, you do this, you do this. It's got to go through a board of executives. They're trying to get 30 million people. I don't know what the message is of CrossFit anymore. You would think that it's constantly varied functional movement performed at a high intensity. You would think that it's fitness in 100 words. You'd think that it's eat freaking fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and meat and fruit and all the crap and you can't have sugar and there's people out there who are eating sugar 
sugar and promoting eat whatever you want while they don't even go to a CrossFit affiliate and CrossFit saying, yes, you guys are the ones that we're going for. Where it used to be forging elite fitness and pukey. Is that what CrossFit is different means? Cause I don't like that one bit. I'm not gonna let that die. I'm not gonna bury that. I like pukey. I like rhabdo. I never got a rhabdo, but I like the idea of the fact that we work so hard, you're gonna put yourself in a hole. Forging elite fitness is way better than forging elite fatness. I saw that with my videos over the last couple of years. This past year, we had the best access. And he gives another statistical point as to where CrossFit is dying. He gives his own YouTube channel stats. Not the back end, I really wish he had given the back end. I've given the back end a couple of times, Rich. Give your freaking back end. Not, 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 not your back end, but you, you, you know what I mean. Just give us whatever it is you want. Made 40, 50 minute episodes and I thought they were incredible behind the scenes and I put so much effort into them and they didn't do as well as previous videos, which like, the dude's literally at the games with a camera in all the athletes' faces, goes wherever the hell he wants at the games with a cool sparkly wristband, and his videos do worse than the year before, and they do worse than the year before that. He shows you that it does worse on average. 50 minute videos and they're doing worse. So it's not, it doesn't stop there. Obviously we'd be going to the big competitions like the CrossFit Games, but actually at the CrossFit Games we made a loss. Uh, the view money didn't bring in as much as it cost us to go to the games. You lost money promoting the sport. Tell you what, Craig, I didn't lose money this year. Nope. Andrew Hiller did not lose money going to the CrossFit Games this year. I guess I didn't have to fly over the ocean, and I guess I stayed in an Airbnb with the worst Wi-Fi ever created, so I couldn't do anything really. It took me five hours to make a video on Danny Spiegel that should have taken me 35 minutes. Remember, I am knuff. My legs, you know, my legs are big enough. Tell me, tell me, tell me you have small, small, small legs without telling me you have small legs. I'm just kidding. Come on, that video. But enough of that. What's the solution? But we're done talking about the crap. Let's talk about the solution, eh, Craig? Uh, but I like to, I really like to get involved in solutions and I hate when people are simply identifying issues, right? In fact, one of my largest pet peeves. Everybody wants a solution. What's the solution? Andrew, you said you would help us with the solution. I don't know where I'm gonna give it, but I'm gonna keep playing some of this stuff. Media. Media portrays personalities. He's right. CrossFit was a media system. CrossFit is a media-based company. CrossFit needs more media. Yeah, yeah, yes, you're right. I believe you're correct, Craig. But then and that takes me on to my second thought is that CrossFit need to do more. Like they need to have more events happening. Like since the CrossFit games, CrossFit needs to do more, huh? I'll tell you what, we're getting to the good stuff. Andrew's gonna give a solution. Andrew disagrees with you on point number two, Craig. I don't think CrossFit needs to do more. Huh? I, I really don't think that they can. I think that they're strapped pretty thin. I think Tommy's napkin math earlier. I used to always really grind my gears when people would do the napkin math. Showed us some stuff. I, I don't think that they can really afford all of the C-suite people that they have right now. I don't think they can really get money to the board of executives to freaking funnel it to the company that wanted all the freaking circulation of cash flow. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a business. This guy. I don't know things from the business standpoint like Sean, but what I do know is what used to work. That's my opinion, but uh, maybe I might be wrong again. I don't know. That's the difference between you and I, Craig. You think that you might be wrong? I know I got the answer. Let me know what you think. I don't think CrossFit's dying. Yes, CrossFit is dying. The CrossFit Games needs to integrate the athletes. It needs to integrate the sport more than ever, and it doesn't need to do that. CrossFit is the thing that needs to do that. You know, Danny Spiegel went on that Kettlebells and Cocktails podcast, she goes, CrossFit needs to be more professional. CrossFit needs to give us more opportunities. Remember sanctionals, remember this, remember that. Oh my God, I have all these ideas, and all I ever do is post pictures of myself to Instagram. Yeah, that video that Danny Spiegel put up. In that same video, she was talking to a very similar point. CrossFit needs to do more, but no Spiegel, you need to do more. I put up a tweet the other day, something on the lines of, who do you think's brought in more people? Or how many people do you think have started CrossFit because of Danny Spiegel? And I bet that there's, I don't know, maybe one person out there. If you started CrossFit because of Danny Spiegel, please leave a comment and I will find you. CrossFit is expensive as hell to run as a freaking sport. And people like Spiegel are doing nothing to help it out. The sport costs a lot of money to run. Mm -hmm. Right. So simultaneously, yes, there are dick ups and people are making mistakes and there are because this will stop existing if we wholeheartedly and intentionally stop supporting the community, the participation, mm -hmm. etc. Rory right there is talking specifically about the open participation and content creators, maybe even possibly talking about me, myself and I sitting right here in this chair making videos not to support and sign up for the CrossFit Open because I have done that in the past. I said, don't sign up for the Open. The only reason that I ever saw value to signing up for the open was when the tests were good. There were five weeks of it. And every year you could compare yourself to what you had done on the previous year.
year. It was the ultimate test of fitness. It was running the mile. It was the bench press for CrossFitters. Is my bench stronger? Am I stronger? Did I increase my ranking in the CrossFit Open? They completely ruined that thing. They did it by decreasing the amount of tests. Oh, it's going to be better for the affiliates. Well, what are you giving them? You should be giving them the test of fitness. They de-incentivized the elite athletes from doing it. Good enough, right? Huh? It's good enough. It's good enough. Open is not important, so... The goal is not to be fit for the open. The second that they re incentivize the elite athletes to do the open at the freaking top level, then and only then will I promote the open ever again. Until then, I'm still saying do not sign up for the open. CrossFit, in my opinion, has not done anything to reaffirm the trust that you would want with whatever they're going to be doing with that money. That can change in the next couple of months, but in my head, they need to re increase the open to five weeks. They need to re establish the reason that the elite athletes would be doing it at the highest level, and they have to make it mean something from a metric standpoint. Because for 20 bucks, if all you're going to get out of it is where you stack up against yourself, then that's enough. I'm just kidding. But if you expect hundreds of thousands of people to shell $20 into you for no freaking reason whatsoever, other than to put on the CrossFit games, it sounds freaking stupid to me. You had a million dollars, you, you'd do two chicks at the same time? Damn straight. Give it, give somebody something. Give them an extra two weeks. It doesn't cost you anything to do an extra two weeks of the open. I guess unless you're doing the open announcements. But no, I'm not gonna get on board the sign up for the open train for no reason. Give the money to your affiliates for no reason. Put on a competition at your affiliates. 20 bucks by 100 people, they can get you a bunch of new assault bikes, barbells, whatever. It doesn't matter. Castro disagrees with my opinion here. But the foundation for this, and you said this, but you're not saying it this way, the foundation for all of this and the existence of it and what's allowed it to grow is fundamentally this community event that happens in March. So in March, we have a really large online event called The Open, where several hundred thousand people from the CrossFit community come together and compete. Of that, 1.1% of them advance on to the, to the, to the games obviously more advanced to the semifinals and or quarterfinals, and then a very few advanced to semifinals. From what I hear right there, he's asking the hundreds of thousands of people to give 20 bucks to then go and give it directly to Tia Toomey, to give it to Danny Spiegel, to put on the CrossFit games. Mind you, you go to the CrossFit games, you gotta pay your entry fee anyway. You spend $1,000 to sit in the Coliseum. $1,000 seat or a couple hundred dollars to walk around, and I suppose it's up to the individual. What is it that you wanna do with your dollar? If you wanna go watch Tia Toomey compete at the CrossFit games, sure, put your money into the open. You want to watch Justin Madero's compete at the CrossFit Games. Put your money into the open because without you putting your money into the open, they don't exist. If they don't exist, what happens? What happens if the CrossFit Games doesn't exist? What, 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 what happens if the CrossFit, Sevan, what happens if the CrossFit Games don't exist? Wouldn't, wouldn't the games and the opportunities for games athletes grow at the same speed as the rest of the community? Is it like if the affiliates went away, the games would go away. It would be like Florida Grid League. It would just turn <laughs> into like just nothing. I'm guessing. And people have these ideas, break the games off. And I'm like, no, you, this thing is not existing without the, the, the 10,000 or 15,000 affiliates pouring their energy into it from the, from the open to the um, closing ceremony. One, I'm, I'm wondering if you agree with me. And two, are, are there any athletes that exemplify this that are like doing.com or training an affiliate or doing the zone? Number one, he's talking about exactly what I'm talking about right there. Without the freaking affiliates, there is no CrossFit Games. But right now, I don't know why the affiliates would give money to the games because are the games really bringing anything to the affiliates? I'm not talking about the games. The games actually might. The games are this giant meetup. It's like, uh, what is it? The freaking festival. Woodstock, Burning man it's like this thing where all the fitness people go and it's cool everyone meets up everyone sees their buddies and if you get something out of that put your twenty dollars into the open if you want to go watch the fittest on earth compete put your twenty dollars into the open i mean i put a hundred dollars into the open i signed up myself i signed up oliver queen i did like three different judges tests i did the quarterfinals so i put all this money into the crossfit open so maybe that makes me a hypocrite but i make youtube videos i get something out of you you ask yourself what is it that you get out of the crossfit open if you don't get anything and you at the very minimum want to that statistical data point, you don't get that anymore either. And I'm pretty sure last year Adrian said year to year it doesn't matter. I don't remember where I remember hearing that, but I'm pretty sure he said it. More tests equal a better test of fitness. So don't let it be three. There has to be five. And make the 
people who get the most benefit out of all those $20 bills being put into your freaking wallet CrossFit. Make those people earn them. Make them do the open. Make them work after it. Why should Justin Medeiros be able to roll out of bed, do an open workout without a warm up, and be able to just walk himself into the top 10% and then start to get ready for the quarterfinal? Brent Fikowski finishes a thousandth in the open and then he finishes top 10 of the CrossFit games. Oh, he's just tall. It's like, no, it doesn't matter to him. He's not even going to try. Why should he? There's no point. Give us a point, Castro. Here's Castro's opinion on the freaking athletes in the freaking games and what the point of the, the, the inner mechanisms of the affiliates to the games means to him. If I could change the life of one person a week that comes into my gym, if I was running a gym like him, that's some pretty power, powerful and profound stuff. And that's happening across 13,000 gyms around the world. So there, that opportunity and turning every one of those single individuals into an ambassador for the methodology and ambassador for the lifestyle and getting their family members in. Um, that's, that's why the games exist. That's why the games matter. And that is what will propel the games to the next level. If you just focus on the games and lose track of the community and the affiliates and, and that aspect of changing an individual's life, we're misguided. And what I mean by that is some of these athletes these days are kind of, you know, there was a phase, I've talked about this probably on this podcast before, but I've talked about this in other places where um, early on these athletes like Froning, like Kalipa, even Thor's daughter, she's still like this, but she's kind of an outlier now in that this regard of what I'm going to say, were all affiliate owners. They were all trainers. They all, a lot of, even those names I just mentioned there were all on seminar staff. Like they were really involved in the community. And then maybe the post Froning era into the Frazier era and into the current era, um, a, a lot of them didn't even come from affiliates. Majority of them are not trainers. Very few of them own affiliates or are trainers at affiliates. Um, and like very few of them train in a box. So it's a different thing. Um, it's becoming a different thing at the highest level. Everything you need to know is right there. I'm going to tell you what the issue is, and this is why I make all these videos on this individual other than the fact that I think, I think that she's using performance enhancing drugs. Tia Toomey. You can also say somebody like Matt Fraser who went on a global platform. He went on Joe Rogan. I've listened to thing on Spotify a handful of times, and he legitimately says that he used the sport of CrossFit to make money. He talked down upon the trainers at CrossFit affiliates. He didn't do anything to help the brand while he was on Joe Rogan after having just won the CrossFit games. There's a Sevon podcast somewhere where Greg Glassman says that he spent millions of dollars so that Matt Fraser could win hundreds of thousands. He goes, yeah, I could. it's like the worst investment of all time. Why would I spend millions of dollars so that he could make a little bit of money? And that's what he would do. He would take all of the money from the open to put on the CrossFit game so that Matt Fraser could make hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands. He's made millions of dollars over his CrossFit games winnings. And what did he do with it? He started HWPO, his own brand. What did Tia Toomey do with her winnings? She started proving. And guess what? Guess what, Greg? This is your fault too, because in 2017, when you get rid of the media team, the media team is the people who would ship these people out to go make the road to the games where Ben Smith is doing all these workouts and he's doing it. Ben Smith versus Matt Fraser versus Rich Froning versus Katrin versus the S. Landick girls. Remember those road to the games things that were put on by Heber and Marge? Well, guess what? Heber and Marge are now doing their own thing over on the Buttery Bros. This is all really a Greg Glassman thing from firing the media team because CrossFit's a media company. Remember? CrossFit's a media company. So they start doing worse the second they get rid of all of these people because then all of the athletes go and they do their own freaking things. They go on to Joe Rogan and they're like, well, because I need to make my own money and because it, CrossFit had nothing to do with it and because I was using CrossFit for money. Like Fraser said on Joe Rogan, everything down is a trickle right there. Tia Toomey's Instagram posts are about LMNT and she has this robotic thing where she goes, I am so excited to see everybody compete at this random event that paid me $20,000 to make this Instagram real. I'm so excited to announce I'll be heading over to the Grove Games this year. Guys, I am so excited to be working with Pliability on my new baby program. Program. That's right, I've had one baby, it has nothing to do with my mobility, and I'm so excited to tell you guys all about it. Matt Fraser, hey, come and ride on my stair stepper, help me win the CrossFit games. I haven't seen a stair stepper in a single CrossFit affiliate ever. Wow. And we're comparing it to people like Froning, who has a literal red shirt, ran level one seminars, Andy Thorshutter, who owns CrossFit Reykjavik, Matt Chen, who is on the freaking Titan games, and he's a former level one flow master and a guy that worked as a coach at all these freaking things. That is the issue. 
issue now. It's proven. It's HWPO. It's the fact that CrossFit Mayhem has their own literal road to the games because Greg Glassman got rid of the media team. So CrossFit needs a media team. They need it. Need it. We look a, we look at that a lot and we talk about that a lot. The games and the highest level. I think we almost collectively focus too much on the the smallest amount and the elite rather than continually looking at what the foundation of that is. Second point, what that all makes me think about. Okay, then I'll give you the solution to that that I think. Okay. What I'm suggesting is the athletes need to be the ones who are engaging that part of the community if they want to do their part. They need to be engaging that part of the community. They need to be doing stuff at local affiliates. They need to be pumping up. We're telling. both sweating like a lot. <laughs> Sevan brings it back to the point that I wanted to hammer in right here. It's that the athletes need to do something for the affiliate. They got to do something. Justin Medeiros probably has never trained a person in his life. We can't expect him to be a red shirt like Froning. Can't expect freaking anyone to open up an affiliate. Proven's going to affiliate. Oh, this is going to be so cool. No, it's going to bring more money to Proven. Ross so may have made that video recently on Phil. People can see that. Maybe they'll go join their local affiliate. Maybe they're doing it to just go and join CrossFit Mayhem. It's just a mayhem piece. That's may I'm open to that too. But it's way better than Ben Bergeron trying to start up his own affiliate map, pulling everything from Greg Glassman and making it his own. But in a way, you can't blame any of these people because CrossFit's the one who shoved them out the door. Mm -hmm. But they want, but they identified with what was going on in their affiliate. So hey, maybe I want to be able to help out my affiliate owner from from time mm -hmm. to time, or I, I would I just want to learn a little bit more and be able to say I have my L1, or to be able to like you know help out that guy in the gym in between classes, even though I'm not coaching all the time. And I, and I think that's that, uh, that or, brand or just dude, just, yeah. just because it was just because the brand was fucking cool. Sorry. Yeah. Because yeah, the for brand sure. was awesome. Right. Like exactly yeah. the, yeah, I mean, yeah, to your point, it was like, it was something that people wanted to be associated with, right? At the very, very minimum, CrossFit used to be cool. I can't tell you the last time I just randomly bumped into somebody wearing a CrossFit shirt. I've seen people wearing Metcons. See that all the time. But the Reebok CrossFit shirt is something that you would see, I don't know, maybe once a month in a grocery store. Nobody wears a noble CrossFit shirt loud and proud anymore, right? Well, and, and I again, feel like, like I'm, now, I'm, like that's been replaced with like the Mayhem shirts. Like you're now part of like a camp. You know, it used to be we all just wanted something that said CrossFit on it because you just want to be part of that. And now yeah. it's like you got the mayhem because you got HWPO, you got proven, you got, you know, under like all these, like that's kind of now where I think people are I identifying a little bit. From a business standpoint, Sean Woodland nails it right there. It used to be CrossFit, 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 CrossFit. Which CrossFit affiliate do you go to? Now it's whose programming do you do? HWPO, Proven, Mayhem, do you do Hiller Fit programming? Sign up with the link in the description. If you want the best programming on the face of the freaking planet, you can do it in under an hour if you really want to. Get stronger, go to the semifinals, or just freaking work out in your garage as a mom or a dad. It's for everybody. It's infinitely scalable, written for the best scale for the rest. But you need a lot of equipment, just the standard stuff you'd find in your local affiliate. So do it at your affiliate. Support your local affiliate, do my programming over there. There, do it as an affiliate. I don't freaking care. But that's the issue. CrossFit has given me the power to make these videos. No one's talking to me. No one's giving me money. So I got to make my own freaking money. Tia's got to make her own freaking money. Fraser's got to make his own freaking money. And on some level, we're all the same. I know that they've won the CrossFit games 10,000 times. And I've never won the CrossFit games. I never made the games. I barely made regionals. But I'm not sitting in this chair right now making this video if it's not for CrossFit. And I'm telling you to go to an affiliate. I'm going to local affiliates and making videos for those people. I hope that somebody sees that video and does it themselves. I've got more of community help in the tip of my pinky finger that Danny Spiegel has over the entire circumference of her butt, which is all over the internet. She wants more money in the sport and she's done nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing! Nothing! to help it. From the words of Dave Castro himself, you've got to invest in the community. I put up the tweet the other day, which is you need to be able to plant seeds that you expect to never get anything from. Fraser didn't not only plant any seeds, he looked at a tree, ripped everything out of it, had an opportunity to talk on Joe Rogan about how good it was to have been a part of that, and he just pooped all over the freaking fruit he ripped out of the tree. Tia Toomey can't get enough fruit. She's over here like, I need Laura Horvath to have some fruit. No, I gotta get that from Laura Horvath. I gotta get all the freaking fruit. At least for every time that Rich Froney wants to pull an apple out of the tree, he's planted 13 other trees over there. And everybody knows it. Craig Ritchie knows that it's dying. He doesn't know why. He's got no freaking idea. Sevan definitely knows why. You freaking don't think that that dude knows why? He keeps on pushing Dave to answer it. I don't think Dave gives a direct answer because he knows that he's right too. But then all of these people, with the exception of Lauren, who doesn't say a word of this entire episode, she says a word or two. But the other three, 
Sean, Tommy, and Rory, they know the issue too. CrossFit used to be cool and it isn't cool anymore. There's nothing to stand by because people like Sporty Beth apparently do CrossFit now. That is not Forging Elite Fitness. That is not fitness in a hundred words. No sugar is foundationally CrossFit. Forging Elite Fitness is foundationally CrossFit. And being part of the community is foundationally CrossFit. My favorite part of going to the events is hanging out around everybody. I can't believe people watch my YouTube videos. Fraser's favorite part of the CrossFit game is having his logo tattooed on everybody for a free membership for the rest of their life. Danny Spiegel was seen running through Vendor Village with a hood over her head because she's too cool to see anybody. She's too popular. She got her bodyguards and her agents setting up freaking meet and greets because it isn't about the community for these people anymore and that's the reason that CrossFit's going to die. They're too cool, they're too big, but the sport isn't big enough. You're not Patrick Mahomes. He's still out there doing NFL Play 60 and Make-A-Wish Foundation stuff. The dude makes $50 million in a sport that's worth multi-billion dollars and Danny Spiegel thinks she's making a difference by posting pictures of her butt on Instagram. This is too freaking long. The TLDR of this entire video is CrossFit is indeed dying via the Google metrics. It's doing so because Greg Glassman shut off the media company in 2017. We're still seeing the ramifications of that and if nobody over at CrossFit's gonna figure that out, they don't wanna do anything to get more media people on board, the media company is going to continue to do this. Rick Ritchie's going to see his videos continually decrease. My videos are never going to increase. People need to sign up for the CrossFit Open, but CrossFit needs to give them a reason to sign up, in my opinion. If they have already given you a reason, that's good. Throw your $20 into the machine. They haven't given me a reason to sign up. I think that they need to give you an analytical standpoint as where you are every year. The CrossFit Benchmark, the CrossFit Open. I think there need to be five workouts. I think they need the elite athletes to need to want to try because they're the ones who are benefiting from all of the money that is going into that machine. And if they're the ones who are benefiting from the money being put in the machine, not only should they try in the CrossFit Open, but there should be some sort of a giant kumbaya world where everybody is working in unison. Just Medeiros, who isn't a coach or a trainer. Maybe he drops into local affiliates and does a workout with them. Maybe he does that while he's doing his YouTube video, so it's good for everybody. Just Medeiros being put on by CrossFit HQ is going to be working out in this space in Texas or Indiana or Wisconsin, or maybe they're gonna fly him to another country and try to get a whole bunch of other affiliates, and they're gonna bring a guy with a stupid camera, and the guy with the stupid camera is gonna record Just Medeiros, and they're gonna do that all because they want to. It's not gonna be good, but it doesn't have to be good. It just has to be something, and Medeiros will be getting benefit out of that because he's just gonna be flying around the world helping out CrossFit, and if he helps CrossFit, he's gonna make more money when he inevitably wins the CrossFit games again. Or you can go the Danny Spiegel route and say that you're helping women and just put up pictures of your butt and say that it's empowering. Idiots. Idiot. Andrew Hiller, out. Do it! Yes, you can!